Um, hey, everybody, welcome to TPH Live. As you know, hopefully, if you're a regular, we do this every uh, every weekday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. The goal is to give you a little bit of a sanity break in the middle of your hectic day. Um, and uh, we do five minutes of meditation with a great meditation teacher that those five minutes are designed for absolute beginners or seasoned pros, wherever you are in the spectrum. And uh, the other goal is to really create a little bit of a sense of community, which is important at times like this. And actually, it is community that we're going to talk about today on a couple of fronts. So let me bring in our teacher du jour, uh, the marvelous, the mighty Orin J. Sofer, beaming into us from uh, the left coast, the Bay Area, uh, author of uh, Say What You Mean, and uh, teacher of uh, several courses on the 10% Happier uh, app. Uh, one on uh, navigating your emotions, another on um, uh, relationships, specifically communication, interpersonal communication within relationships. Oren, how are you today? Hey, Dan. I'm doing all right. Thanks. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's always good to have you here. Um, I can't tell you how many people stop me on the street and say, in fact, a woman. I was in Central Park the other day with my son wearing our masks, and some woman biked by and said, "I'm am going to use your app right now. I'm going to go meditate with Orin." So uh, I get a lot of people talking to me about how they love meditating with you. And um, I mentioned the community being a focus of 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 this endeavor of TPH Live, and it's actually that's what you wanted to talk about today: that maintaining relationships in suboptimal times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's really hard, and I know it's folks I'm in touch with, it's the, the length of time that we're needing to maintain physical distance, I think, is really starting to weigh on many of us because uh, we're such relational creatures. And it's hard to not get to see our friends, our families, to be able to hug, to be in person. Uh, and it can take a toll on the heart. So I've been reflecting a lot on how can we access some of the benefits of connection even when we're at a distance, right? That the physical distance doesn't need to mean emotional distance. So what are your thoughts? First of all, plus one, I fully agree, and I'm glad you're bringing this up. So what 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 are your thoughts about how to do this? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of different ways. For me, a lot of it's about getting creative, obviously, because the normal ways we have of connecting are limited. So some of the things that that I've been doing and that I know others in my community have been doing, there's the obvious one of being in touch more, right, on the phone or on video chat and so forth. But there are other ways um, to feel connected and to start to have that sense of community. Some of my friends have taken up writing letters again, sending postcards, which is a really sweet way to connect. There's something really special about getting something in the mail that you can open up and read that someone's written. Um, volunteering, helping out. You know, we've got neighbors here uh, who are older, and every time we go to the store, we do some shopping for them. And it's just a really lovely way to feel connected. So even if there aren't others in your life family, friends that you can be in touch with, just in our community around us, there are always ways to help out, uh, to serve. And then um, nature is a huge and inexhaustible resource for connection. And, you know, I, I used to live in the city. I went to college uptown. And um, even in New York, you know, walking down the street, being able to see a flock of pigeons swooping, you know, or seeing a tree seeing the trees or the, the catching the clouds or the the wind we can really start to expand beyond the sense of our narrow little world when we open our awareness and connect with the natural world it's a way we can feel a sense of belonging and expansion and a deeper sense of place and then the the last resource of course is meditation that when we are struggling to find the sense of community and belonging and connection in the external worlds, there's an inexhaustible resource for connection within. And through connecting to the heart, uh, remembering those who have been important to us in our lives, uh, and cultivating the qualities of kindness, generosity, compassion, these, these qualities that we have access to as human beings connect us to the rest of humanity. And that can be a huge resource during this time. And you've led me in your expert way right to where we want to go at this point in the show, which is meditation. And uh, two things to say. One, you've got questions on this on the subject that uh, Oren is dwelling on today around maintaining connection. 
having your relationships have some going vibrancy and aliveness to them in this pandemic send them to us and we'll run them by uh Oren after the meditation other thing is shout out friend uh eleanor who uh, sometimes you may see in the background here she's our child care provider she's gonna she's right off camera over here she likes to meditate uh, she's she's a co-conspirator so uh, i'm gonna mute myself and eleanor and i will meditate with you great all right friends um not already go ahead and find a comfortable position Maybe take a deep breath or roll your shoulders and neck and just doing whatever helps you to shift you in. If you like, you can close your eyes or just gaze down at the ground, letting your, letting your gaze be soft and unfocused. And feel the sensations of your body sitting, contact with the ground or the chair. Maybe noticing the support of the earth beneath you. There's something stable and solid that we can rest on. See if you can begin to give your weight to the chair or the ground beneath you. This is one source of connection that we often overlook. There's this steady, stable support of the ground. And then I thought we could try something a little different today to begin. I invite you to think of a good friend, a close relative, or even a favorite place in nature. And just imagine being there, either in that place or with that friend. And let the picture become as real and clear as possible in your mind's eye. And get a sense of what it feels like to be in that place, sitting, taking it easy with this friend or relative, or maybe surrounded by this favorite place in nature. Notice if anything relaxes inside. Notice how your body feels. Maybe there's a sense of spaciousness or ease. Some quality of being at home and relaxed right here and now. And then in your own time, you can let that picture fade, just let the imagination go, but stay with those qualities of ease, relaxation, feeling connected and at home in yourself. And then as you sit quietly, you might begin to notice the sensations of your body breathing. This is very simple, steady rhythm. You don't need to breathe in any special way. Your body's already breathing by itself, so. Just gently receiving, tuning in to those sensations as you breathe in being fully aware of that experience as you breathe out, just letting go, relaxing. Feeling the sensations of this breath, which sustains our life from moment to moment. a kind of intimate connection with yourself.
allowing your face to be relaxed, your eyes and jaw, allowing your neck and shoulders to soften, seeing if you can invite the whole body to settle and relax. Nothing else you need to do right now, except be here and feel the breath. And then in your own time, beginning to shift your attention outwards, wiggling your toes and fingers, letting your eyes slowly open, taking a deeper breath if you like, and even just kind of looking around the room where you are, just reorienting to your surroundings. All right. Thanks for that. How'd that go, Eleanor? Very good. <laughs> you get high marks from Eleanor, Orrin. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the casino with my friend. Wait, come over here and say that. Do you mind? Can we, can we bring Eleanor in, Orrin? Is that okay? Please. I'd love part to of our family. Come. What were you going to say? That was so good. I went oh, to the great. casino with my friend just now. <laughs> In her I mind. Did, I'm so mind. glad. And I was like, we were all, <laughs> oh my gosh, that was really, really good. Great. I uh, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. You know, it's a, it's amazing. It's one of the things I wanted to point to, which is that. Yeah, oh you know, my gosh. I actually, you know, you said, take a friend, be somewhere. And we went to, it was like old time. The mm. music was, oh. It's powerful, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. You're Appreciate welcome. It. That was Thank so you. good. Thank you, guys. She's going to yeah. be our daily. She that to the was best. So good. As long as our son allows it, she'll be she'll be part of the meditation oh as much as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Yay. Thank you guys. She's she's a big part of the family. Sorry, Orin. Go ahead and say what you were going to say. No, I was just going to comment on what she was saying, which is you know that's the whole point is that even when we're far apart geographically, we can still feel really close in our heart. Because we, we carry each other inside, right? That's the, the effect that we have on one another in our lives lives in our heart. And so when we call someone to mind, when we think of them, we can feel that connection and we can draw on that as a resource, especially during these times. Questions are coming in. Alexis Copperman asks, I guess my question is, how do you find connection when family is not around and you have experienced great loss? Yeah. Yeah, it, t it takes a certain um, a certain amount of courage, I think, because uh, with connection comes pain and loss, and it's it, it is that way for all of us. Um, that's that's the nature of our hearts, right? Is that when we feel close, there's that vulnerability to pain and to loss. So I think there are two parts to it for me, Alexis. One is being willing to, in your own time in your own way, open to that pain, to allow yourself to feel it, because the pain is a reflection of your love. And if we cut ourselves off from our pain, we cut ourselves off from our love and joy in life. So that's one part of it. And then the other part is, is balancing that with finding other ways of feeling nourished by connection that, that don't come with that shadow of pain and loss. So whether it's with a pet, you know, with your neighbor, with the trees outside, with a memory from your childhood. But look, we, we need that sense of being uplifted, particularly when there's pain and loss to balance both. So I would work in both of those directions. You know, I, I interviewed an expert on grief on the 10% Happier podcast recently, David Kessler. And I, I believe he said this, and if he didn't say it, somebody else smart said it, which is, so I understand why you may not want to get in touch with that feeling of loss. It's incredibly painful. 
Yeah. But uh, while you've lost the person, or in many cases, many of us, if we haven't lost somebody, we've lost a way of life, at least temporarily and perhaps even longer, you, the love is still there. And, mm -hmm. and it's worth touching in on that, even though it's painful. Yeah, well said. Thank you, Dan. Uh, <clears throat> and by the way, uh, with Alexis, uh, she this is somebody who lost her husband. Um, and we actually re referenced Alexis r recently. So Alexis, just want to repeat that we're, mm. I am, and we are very sorry for your losses. Awful. Um, Gina asks, uh, how do you stay connected with family members who are far away and who are often toxic and emotionally draining? I want to stay connected, but often I feel worse off afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Gina. Yeah. Also, you know, in today's day and age, not, not uncommon, right? So what comes to mind for me, Gina, is a couple things. One is contacting your motivation. So why is it that you want to stay in touch and stay connected? Uh, obviously, there's something important you care about because even though uh, it comes at a cost and it isn't particularly sounds like enjoyable or connecting for you, there's something that you want to give. And, and that is nourishing. So if you, can connect, if you can identify and sense more fully the beauty and the, um, the kind of brightness of your own intention to reach out, to be there, uh, to provide support, connection, comfort in their life, that can be kind of a refuge and a resource for you. So that's the first thing is connecting with that place in yourself. And then I, I think the second thing is being discerning about where your limits are. So how long you stay on the phone, what topics you talk about, and almost it sounds a little a little woo woo uh, but almost kind of like imagine a little bit of a protective bubble around yourself or something when you get on the phone or get on the video chat with them so that if they make comments or say things that land as a dig that you're not taking it on you know so you feel like you have some protection around your heart you're really there just to um, provide whatever comfort and support you can to them uh, but you don't need to take on their anger, frustration, judgment, blame, whatever it is that's difficult for you in that relationship. So you're both literally setting limits in terms of how long you stay on the call or what you talk about, but also energetically and emotionally. You're kind of going into the call with some sense of being prepared for what might come and recognizing that's about them. It's not about you so that you're not taking on stuff that's not your own. I hope that's helpful, Gina. Oren, you're always, always helpful. Um, don't forget his book, Say What You Mean. And don't forget to check out his many, many, many offerings inside the 10% Happier app. Stick around for one second, Oren. I just want to take care of a few items of business here. Uh, first is uh, just a little bit of an update. On uh, Friday, we talked about a charity organization that we're really excited to support here at 10% Happier, and there's a little bit of an update. New Yorkers for Children uh, was the group. They uh, support kids uh, who are in foster care or who have recently aged out of foster care with uh, some uh, financial support so that they can take care of basic needs. And over the weekend, our uh, viewers contributed about $3,000 to the organization. The organization was extremely grateful and they sent us a note, quote, we received a $10 donation from somebody who wrote, I know it's small, but it came from my unemployment check. So really and just incredibly moving people's desire to help out um oh one other thing i want to say uh i've got actually two other things i want to say um uh oren uh not only is does he have the book that i referenced and all the offerings on the 10 percent happier app but he's about to do an online loving kindness meditation teach uh, retreat with the great sharon salzberg uh oren actually let me bring you up back in because do you want to say a few words about that for people who might be interested Sure, yeah. So for those who don't know, loving kindness meditation is a form of meditation practice that helps us feel more connection in our hearts and in our lives. And Sharon Salzberg, who was 
one of the founders of the insight meditation movement in this in the West and really popularized and made loving kindness meditation accessible is teaching the retreat with myself and a few colleagues. It starts on Wednesday at the Insight Meditation Society. And all the information is on IMS's website at dharma.org, D-H-A-R-M-A.org. There's scholarships available. It's going to be a really sweet time. So if you'd like to join us, I'd love to have you there. Great. Thank you for that. One last thing I want to say is that, um, and this re refers back to the whole theme of today's episode, which is community. And one of the great things about TPH Live is that we've noticed that you guys are really talking to one another in the comments section of YouTube. So uh, we are creating um, a Facebook group. Uh, to work on community engagement. Um, it's not something we can uh, tackle immediately, um, but we are working on doing that. Uh, the live sessions are being posted daily to our Facebook page, and people in the, in the YouTube community that want to connect further can post comments to our Facebook page and connect with each other from there. Um, Amy, uh, Amy uh, B., who works with us, will share a link uh, with you in the chat so you can find it in one place. Uh, our guest tomorrow will be uh, Jeff Warren. Oren, thank you again, and we'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, stay home and stay safe. Thanks, Dave.